exiting the archway. I can see I've reached the upper bridges of Berg. I'm higher up than I realised. To my left is the long, wide surface of the bridge, scorched black by some unknown source. Bodies of hollows burned black scattered along its length. How recently was this done? To my right, the last sight I would have expected here. Oh yeah! Praise the sun! Who is this figure, looking so serene, gazing at the sun in a place like this? I should introduce myself. Ah! Hello there! You don't look hollow, far from it. I am Slayer of Astora, an adherent of the Lord of Sunlight. Her words so calm and sure. That's right, it's a woman. I have no idea how to respond. My nerves are on edge after fighting the Taurus Demon. In comparison, I must appear so raggedy. Who might you be? Oh, yes. God damn it, I'm getting voices fucked up already. Oh, yes. I am the Chosen Undead. I've come for the Upper Bell of Awakening. What brings you here? Now that I am undead, I've come to this great land, the birthplace of Lord Gwyn, to seek my very own son. Oops. Can I go backwards? She's coming to look for her very own son, and I accidentally skipped a line, I'm sorry. Your own son? Do you find that strange? Well, you should. I raise a curious eyebrow, though my helmet probably doesn't give that away. No need to hide your reaction. I get that look all the time. <laughs> I can't help but smile. Crazy as the quest might seem, this Solaire carries an aura of calm, cheery confidence. So contrary to the feel of the rest of the Berg, this conversation feels like something from a completely different world to the one I was in a few minutes ago. Your own son, you say? How goes your search so far? Oh, uh, <laughs> so I didn't scare you. Well then, I have a proposition. If you have a moment. Sure. The way I see it, our fates appear to be entwined. We have had the good fortune to meet in such trying times. In a land brimming with hollows, could that really be mere chance? So, what do you say? Why not help one another on this lonely journey? Sure, why not? I'll be a son, bro. This pleases me greatly. Well then, take this! She hands me a white soapstone, its edges seeming to reflect a little more light than they should. We are admit strange beings in a strange land. The flow of time itself is convoluted, with heroes century-old phasing in and out. The very fabric wavers. The relations shift and obscure. Obscure. There's no telling how much longer your world and mine will remain in contact. But use this to summon one another as spirits, cross the gaps between the worlds, and engage in jolly co cooperation. Of course, we're not the only ones engaged in this, but I am a warrior of the sun. I spot my summon signature easily, easily by its bright, brilliant aura. If you miss it, you must be blind. <laughs> oh, I do apologize. I intend to ramble on. I won't keep you any longer. I've no doubts your quest is important to you as well. We'll stay behind to gaze at the sun. The sun is a wondrous body, like a magnificent father. If only I could be so grossly incandescent. And with that, she turns back to the balcony and raises her gaze to the sun. Its rays peeking between thick clouds. Doubtless the strangest conversation so far, but it has left me feeling reassured. A glance at the soapstone still in my hand. 
what she meant by cross the gap between worlds. I turned back to face the bridge, my head drifting reluctantly back to the world outside this small balcony. I'm covered in dirt, sweat, and demon blood, and still shaking from the fight, but now is no time for a break. After a few false starts, I've finally encountered a human sane enough to hold a conversation, and instinct says she's not the only one. It's a heartening thought. It does a lot more to keep me moving than the nebulous fate of the undead. Before me lies an old stone bridge, with a smattering of garden variety hollow warriors, each equipped with a set of worn out plate armor and a blunted weapon. These don't make for much of a challenge anymore. I've become stronger, faster, more sure in my movements, and I can dispatch one of these sorry gangs of undead in no time at all. I stride confidently onto the bridge, ready to take on some hollows when... Roar! A guttural roar rattles across the bridge, shaking the dominant undead into action. Dormant, not dominant. Well, they might be dominant, who knows, I'm not going to comment on their sexual tendencies. But they quickly become the least of my worries as they disappear into the shadows of a tremendous red dragon. Well, a wyvern actually. <laughs> but now's not the time to be recalling my education. The creature descends onto the bridge, snarling at its inhabitants. It opens its mouth and sends a pillar of flame hurtling across the bridge, incinerating the stunned hollows. I can feel the suffocating heat radiating off the cobblestone, even from here. Panicking, I dive to the right and take cover behind a waist-high wall in the bridge which instantly becomes superheated by another blast of fire. As the beast takes aim once more, I notice a set of downward stairs by the wall and tumble inelegantly down them to safety. I emerge at the bottom, choking on dust. I am trembling and entirely devoid of dignity, but alive. So much for the glorious demon slayer, I suppose. But I'm not out of the woods yet, I realize. I've gotten in here, wherever here, maybe, but getting out. just hope there's another way back to Firelink. A single hollow stands guard beneath the bridge, defending its mossy columns from enterprising adventurers like myself. It takes notice of me and warily approaches, then lifts its sword into a slow, forceful swing which crashes uselessly against my shield. The second it takes the hollow to recover, I thrust my blade through a hole in its chest plate into the soft, exposed flesh of its chest. I yank out the sword, creating a nasty exit wound, and kick the newly made corpse off the bridge. Now this, I decide, I can deal with. I continue along the trail. My next opponent is a spear wielder, and more cautious than his unfortunate comrade. Fortunately, he's not much smarter. Once I deflect his thrust, I slip past the effective range of his weapon and deliver a forceful kick to his stomach sending him flying into the great wide yonder below. Here, the path narrows into a nauseating slither, forcing me to shuffle defensively along it and try not to look down. At least it's not a dragon. The ledge terminates at the entrance to another old abandoned bridge house. This one folded, flooded ankle-deep in putrid water. A family of giant rats are huddled together, half-submerged in the muck, I was trained to fight humans, not four-foot disease vectors, so I'm grateful for the opportunity to slip out unnoticed. Is it possible for an undead to contract a disease? We are, barring following, more or less immortal, aren't we? It's a sobering thought. We've been granted an eternity in which to either hollow out or gradually descend into madness, but no point in wallowing in self-pity here. I have an objective. I emerge from the tunnel nonchalantly shredding an unfortunate hollow and see it. Standing proudly in the sunlight, a great cathedral towers above the area, casting a long shadow over the modest fortress surrounding it. At its highest point, a huge bronze bell hangs silently, awaiting me. This is the place. Undead Parish. But to get there, I have to mow down the fortress's garrison, a small army of horrors. There are a handful of ground troops clustered around a cast iron born boar statue. Behind them, a row of crossbowmen provide backup. 
Hollows aren't particularly good shots, but with these numbers, they don't have to be. I grit my teeth and try to work out a plan of attack. Can I lure some of the ground troops out without a learning range support? It's worked in the past, albeit against smaller forces. If I wait, I know I'll lose my nerve. So I begin to carefully pace towards the nearest hollow. I make it through the arched gate undetected. Frustration sets in. My target continues to stare blankly into the distance. Its dull orange eyes glazed over. I tap my sword against the wall of the fortress. Once. Twice. Three times. Each time a little louder. Its head snaps back and it begins a solitary approach. Success! Its comrades take no interest in their fellow guardsmen wandering off. But this single warrior has its sights set on me grunts and breaks into a shambling jog, its undisciplined sword hand waving wildly about. It's quietly back up. I quietly back up, hoping to draw the fight out of sight to the others. But the stray's hollow's movement alerts other another. I suppress my instinct to panic. Two hollows is no big problem, though it will hamper my ability to fight quietly. And then it moves. The boar statue, which stands ten heads tall, rears up and charges, impaling two hollows on its massive iron tusks, then tossing them aside as if they were weightless. I roll out of the way as its hooves thunder against the pavement, a heartbeat away from crushing my head into a fine mist. It halts, sniffing the air. I waste no time in bolting for the cathedral. Sixty paces to the door I can hear it begin to move. My feet hammer the paving stones as I rush towards the steps. Forty. The remaining hollows, now fully alert, close on me. One steps aside and pulls a lever near the archway, causing the portcullis to begin lowering. Twenty. The boar is approaching fast, and I cringe as I imagine its metallic tusk cleaving through my spine, crushing my limbs, pulling my... Nope! Just run! I hear a crash. The ground seems to shake beneath me, and the boar howls in pain as anger as it slams against the now closed gate. Tips of its broke its wooden frame fly across the terrace as the boar's spiked frame rails against it. For a second, I expected to tear the whole thing to pieces and come after me with a renewed fury. But soon enough, it gives up and returns to its vegetative state, now surrounded by the mangled corpses of its fellow guards. I've made it. The cathedral stands tall and imposing before me, even in its somewhat degraded state still taken from my run-in with the boar and the dragon, so despite my burning curiosity, I do not enter. Instead, I look over to my right. A short trail leads down to a far more modest structure, half concealed by trees and apparently unguarded. Perhaps I can shelter there for a little while. For once, I've struck gold. Inside the little house, I see a smoking fire pit just waiting to be lit up once more. Once lit, the sight of its dancing flames fills me with an overwhelming sense of tranquility. I sit down at the fire and revel its soothing warmth. It's time to take a rest. And that is where we are going to call it an end for this part. Now, I did this, you know, semi as a joke. But if you want to see more of this, by all means, let me know and I'll do more of it. I mean,. Actually, I was expecting it to be a hell of a lot worse. <laughs> it's actually fairly serious. I was expecting it to be a hell of a lot more comedic. Uh, and if you're interested in getting this, you don't need Dark Souls to run it. I'll put a link in the description. Um, I don't. I'm afraid that I don't know who the original creator was. However. I can link you to a working download, at least working as of the time that I downloaded it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed, and let me know if you want to see more. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe to see more stuff that I do. I don't plan on doing many visual novels, but we'll see. And yeah. Hope you enjoyed, guys. I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.